Hi guys, Angela here from the London App Brewery. So in the last episode, we made our designs for our Dice app and we made it look beautiful, but we realized that there was a slight problem in that it didn't look very good when you turned the phone to horizontal or when you changed the screen size. So people who have different screen size or different iPhones can't have the same appearance of the app. And in this episode, we're going to learn about auto layout and constraint setting in order to correct that. So let's get started. So just a quick reminder. So this is when we run our app on an iPhone 6 and you can see that clearly a large chunk of the screen is not being used at all. And when we go into hardware, rotate left or rotate right and turn the screen into landscape mode, again, it cuts off a large part of our design. So now let's go ahead and take a look inside our document outline. And that's this pane over here on the left of the interface builder. Now, if you don't see this pane, then you can click on this little button here, which is a square with a straight line on the left of it to toggle open and close the document outline. Now, if you go ahead and expand all three arrows, then you can take a look at the hierarchy of all our designs. So the view, this is the main view and it, when you click on it, it highlights the whole screen. And this is the space where all of our images and button is located. So what we want to do is we want to go and make another view in order to contain each of them separately. I'll show you what I mean. So when you go to the right, the bottom right of the screen on Xcode, make sure that you've got the object library selected and you want to go in and type in the search bar UI view. And here you've got a view that pops up. So it's the white square on a gray background and go ahead, click on it and drag it onto the screen. So this is going to be our middle container and it's going to contain the two dice images. But first, let's resize it to make it um, fit the screen a bit better. So we're going to go into the size inspector and we're going to make the width uh, 245 and we're going to make the height 100 and then just type it in and click enter. And now holding on to this middle view, we're going to drag it until you see the blue guidelines pop up. So if you look at the screen now, we've got the vertical guideline pop up and the horizontal guideline pop up. So this means that our view is in the vertical center of the screen and in the horizontal center. So go ahead and drop it there. So now you can see in the document outline, we've got a number of views here. Um, in order to avoid confusion, we're going to rename this view. So first click on it, wait two seconds and then click on it again. And we're going to name this middle container and then click enter. Um, so then we're going to need a top container to contain the logo and a bottom container to contain the roll button. So again, drag on your um, top container and just make sure that the height is exactly 234 and make sure that it's aligned to the top left corner of the screen. So these values here should read zero and zero, indicating that it's right up next to the top corner of the screen. And then we're gonna drag another view down here, and then we're gonna make it fit the bottom of the screen. So it should be the width of the phone. And then we're gonna make sure that the height is two, three, four, and then just move it down just a little bit. There we go. So now that's perfect. So this has a height of two, three, four. This has a height of two, three, four, and this has a height of 100. And it's right in the middle of the contain of the phone vertically and horizontally. So now we've got a mass of white at the moment and I can't really tell which is which. So let's just go ahead and change some of the colors to make it a bit easier. So let's make the top one. I mean, you can go ahead and change it to whatever color you want, but I'm just going to make it red, green and blue. And this way I can see a little bit better what's going on. So I've got three containers. 
Now, as we did with the previous one, we're going to rename the two containers. So when you click on them, you can see the uh, toggle buttons come up so you can figure out which one is which. And this one is obviously the top container. So let's go ahead and rename it as top container. And this one is obviously the bottom container. So let's rename it that. Great. So now we've got three containers. We need to put in the individual items. So for the top container, we're going to put in the Dicey logo. So grab the logo and then drag it so that this blue line, instead of being right up to the left of that uh, top container icon, it needs to be nested inside. So that little blue circle has to be indented to indicate that your Dicey logo is actually going inside the container. So this is what's called a parent-child relationship as opposed to these ones which are on the same hierarchy and they have a sibling relationship. So let's go and select DICE 1 and DICE 2 image views and just hold down the command button to select both of them. And then again in the same fashion we're going to put it inside the middle container. And then finally for the roll button we're going to throw it inside the bottom container. Okay, great. So this is the layout that you should be looking at. You should have the Dice 1, Dice 2 indented under the middle container, Dicey logo indented and contained within the top container, and the roll button within the bottom container. Now you can see that through our moving process, um, the two Dice images have been shifted. So we're going to go ahead and grab this um, second image view, put it right to the right of the middle container and this one right up to the left edge of the middle container. So that is exactly how we want it. So now we can go ahead and set our constraints. So you can select the middle container here or you can select it here and we're going to go down to the right bottom corner of the interface builder and we're going to click on this icon that looks a bit like a box and whisker plot and this is the pin button. And we're going to select we're going to select its width and height and we're going to pin its width and height. So we're saying that the width and the height of this middle container should always be two, four, five and 100, no matter the screen size. And then we're going to click on add to constraints. Now you can see these red lines pop up and you can see some warning signs. This is Exco telling you that your rules that you've set for how to display this middle container is incomplete. So if we've only set and we've only told Exco that this should be this width and this should be this height at all times, we still haven't told Xcode where it should be. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Click on this button next to the pin button and we're going to set alignment rules. So we're going to say that this container should always be the horizontal center and always be vertically in center. So let's add these two constraints and you can see that all the errors will go away. And what have I done? What I've done just now is basically um, state that this middle container should always be in the middle of the screen, no matter the screen size, no matter the orientation. And we're going to set some rules for the rest of the containers. So this container should be always at the top edge of the phone and it should always be right at the left and right edges. So we're going to uncheck this constraint of margins and we're going to click on these two to make them red. And that's saying that this screen should always be stuck to the top, left and right of the screen. And then finally, we're going to put this last constraint down. And that says that this top container should always have zero pixel distance to the middle container. And you can see that it's saying spacing to nearest neighbor and the nearest neighbor is the middle container. But when you click on the drop down button, you can also see that the middle container is ticked and that's saying this is zero pixels to the middle container. So go ahead and add all four of these constraints. And then let's do the same for the bottom container. So again, uncheck constraint and margins. And then we want to have all four edges aligned uh, pinned rather. So pin to the bottom edge, pin to the left, right, and also have 
zero pixel distance to the middle container, exactly how we want. Add four constraints and that's it. Cool. So now let's run the app again. So a lot of designing for apps is about iterative, um, is an iterative process. It's about doing it again and again, making sure that it looks right. So here you can see that it's rotated, but if we rotate it back to portrait mode, you can see that the middle containers, um, the top and lower containers are now occupying the correct proportions on the screen. But there is a slight problem. The image contained within it are all still not quite right. So let's go and correct that. So again, stop the app. So we're going to click on the top logo here and we want it to be right in the center horizontally and vertically um, of the top container. And this is what we're able to do within containers. If we said, you know, uh, keep it right in the middle, vertically, horizontally, we can only do that once for the whole screen. But if we split it up into three um, containers, then we can say, put this in the middle of the top container, put this in the middle of the bottom container, etc. So make sure that you've got this dicey logo selected either here or over here. And then we're going to go into alignment and we're going to say horizontally and vertically in the center of the, um, the container. And now you can see these yellow dash lines come up and you've got a little warning. It's saying that I know that I should keep this um, logo in the middle of your middle con of your top container. But I don't know what size you want it because, you know, no matter which size, I can always keep it in the middle. So you might want to set some rules for that. That's what it's trying to say. So let's go ahead and set some rules for that. Let's say height and width. Let's lock it to the current size. And then we're going to add two constraints. And there we go. All the errors go away. And we're going to do exactly the same for the roll button. So horizontally, vertically in center. And then fix the height and width. Add two constraints. That's it. Cool. Now, if we go and run this app, let's have a look at what it looks like. Okay, great. So now this is in the middle, this in the middle. The only thing that looks weird is this green background. So I can show you what I mean. If we get rid of all these colors now for the containers, so let's go ahead and set it as default, which is transparent. And this one, default, transparent. And this one, also change it to transparent. And run the app again. You can see that the background, the sort of green color background, is still not quite fitting to the size of the iPhone 6 screen. It's still the size of an iPhone 5 canvas. So we can go and fix that as well. So click on the new background. And we're going to go into pin and uncheck constraint margins. We're going to pin it to all four sides of the screen so that no matter which um, iPhone screen size it is, um, it will always stretch to fit the entire screen. That's what this rule is saying. And let's go ahead and run it. There we go. Now this looks a lot better. Let's rotate it to the left. That looks great. And let's change the device to an iPhone 6 Plus. So again, a different canvas size. Okay, so as we can see on an iPhone 6 Plus, it still looks absolutely fine, exactly as we intended. Rotate left, that's still fitting on the screen and everything looks great. Of course, again, none of the buttons work and none of the images change. And this brings us on to our next episode where we learn how we can link up our designs to the code that we have in our project. So keep your eyes peeled for the next lesson and remember to subscribe. See you soon.